Welcome to this webinar on hybrid solutions using WinPro. My name is Pemöller, and with us today we have our hybrid specialist, Mess Sørensen. Mess is a very experienced energy consultant at END, and he's an expert user of both WinPro and EnergyPro. If you have any questions during the webinar, please use the chat box uh, in the Teams, either in the browser or in the in the app, uh, and then I'll see if I can pass them on to Mess uh, while he uh, presents or at the end. So without much further ado, I'll hand it over to you, Mess. Thank you very much. I, um, yeah, as mentioned, my name is Mess. I will give you a short introduction to our tool hybrid in, uh, in WinPro. And hopefully you can see my presentation. Uh, I can at least see a red square around it. Hybrid. Let's uh, let's start with an, a definition of uh, hybrid. What is it actually we are talking about? Yeah, we are talking about combination of more technologies. And um, when we talk about more technologies, then we are talking about electricity producing technologies. So we are talking about wind power. That means uh, wind farms, wind turbines. And then it's, of course, solar PV plants. To make any sense, these uh, assets, they need some kind of grid connection. And that is basically what we want to investigate when we have this uh, hybrid uh, analysis. We want to investigate how can these uh, producing units uh, work together with the, with the grid. And uh, in that context, we can also include uh, some kind of storage battery uh, system. Uh, and that can also be included in the analysis. Still, the batteries, they're quite expensive, uh, but um, yeah, we can investigate it and we can see if there's any value in it uh, in the setup we, we are investigating here. So what are the, the pros and cons from for, for hybrid? Yeah, the most obvious one is, of course, the efficient use of uh, transmission networks. You can combine a wind farm and a PV plant on the same grid connection. If we take uh, Denmark as an example, we can uh, <clears throat> we can install one megawatt of wind, one megawatt of PV, and then still only need one megawatt of grid connection. So there's this one to one to one ratio. So that means you can, for one grid connection, actually build um, a lot of installed capacity. Then there are, of course, a lot of other pros. Uh, you can uh, use the land more efficiently and so on. But there's, of course, also uh, cons, and that is you need to curtail the wind farm or the, the PV plant in some situations. When you reach the grid capacity limit, then of course you need to curtail and the, the entire investigation and or optimization is to, to minimize the, the value of, of that curtailment. Quite often we see a curtailment in high wind periods and in high wind periods, we often see very low electricity prices, and therefore a curtailment might not mean that much in terms of economy. So that's the that's the whole idea here, that we have some very uh, low price hours where we can curtail the, the wind turbines, for example. And how have we uh, implemented that into uh, WinPro? Yeah, we have uh, we have built a system like uh, this. Uh, let me see if I can uh, add a pointer here. We can have a wind farm. We can have a PV plant. All of it is inside what we call the microgrid. Inside that microgrid, we can have a battery. And we can also have a, a self-consumption inside the microgrid. Um, that is one of the, the two use cases I will show. That is, um, if we have a, a self-consumption within our microgrid, how can we use hybrid to optimize that? Um, and then, of course, there needs to be some kind of interface to the, to the grid and to the spot market. So over here, we have listed it. We need some kind of electricity production. It can be wind. It can be PV. It can also be other. Uh, production 
And uh, you can see here I've mentioned time series because all data can either be modeled in WinPro for, for wind farms and PV plants, but you can also add time series if you, for example, have time series from uh, PV Syst for a PV plant, you can simply load that into to WinPro and run the calculations uh, with hybrid there. We have uh, some kind of storage included that is a battery. And um, then there can be an uh, electricity demand. There will be some export export at this interface here. And then of course there can be self consumption here inside the microgrid. And um, the external grid, that is a day ahead market or spot market. Uh, for now, we don't have any more advanced markets or ancillary services. Uh, one could say that the real benefit of a battery could be these more advanced uh, electricity markets. But for now, we are focusing on the day ahead and spot market. A little bit about the, the prioritization in, uh, in the hybrid tool. Um, we have hard coded the, the prioritization of the units uh, in this order here. So that means we will first uh, curtail a, a wind turbine if needed and afterwards a PV plant if needed. You can say that could be a bit uh, opposite if we want to curtail the PV first, but this is what we have decided here. We are thinking of, of adding the flexibility to, to select the prioritization uh, manually. But that's important to remember when we start uh, investigating the optimization. And then another thing also uh, hard coded in the, in the tool is, is the decision tree here that if a kilowatt hour is produced, then if we can use it directly for our self consumption, we will do that. If we still have too much uh, energy, we will charge our battery. And uh, if the battery is full and we have fulfilled our self consumption demand, then we will start export. If the export limit is reached, then we will try to curtail the assets in this order up here. That was a bit technical background for it. We will come back to that uh, when I show the demo in WinPro. And uh, what I will show in WinPro is these two examples here, two use cases. Use case one, that's a, a rather simple one, uh, but, but a rather uh, interesting one if you if you have a house or a factory when you, where you have some electricity consumption and you want to investigate, how can I get rid of these very high electricity prices? I could install my own PV plant or I could install my own wind turbine. And then you can use hybrid to investigate this behind meter solution. The other use case is, uh, is more on the utility or grid scale where we look at a wind farm, we look at a PV plant, we have some limited grid connection, we might have some battery uh, systems. And what we want to investigate is the right balance between the wind farm capacity and the PV plant capacity. And of course, to see if it makes sense to uh, investigate a battery solution. So, um, Next slide is, uh, oops, now my mouse died. So this one, I will jump to a live demonstration of the WinPro hybrid tool. So let me see if I can uh, end this presentation there and then jump to my WinPro. Perhaps some of you are completely new to uh, to WinPro, so just a short introduction to what you see here. Uh, WinPro is the is split into four or five windows, so to say. We have a map down here. WinPro is a GIS tool where you can do planning for wind turbines and and PV plants. Um, <clears throat> in this case, we have installed a wind turbine here next to to the house. We have estimated the production, 
<coughs> and that is done through a park calculation, and that is the the second window of uh, WinPro where we have all our calculations. And then we have layers here, and we have result layers up here. So that is just a setup of WinPro. We will use very uh, only very little of it uh, in this hybrid tool. We have installed a wind turbine here next to our house, and we want to see if we can cover the electricity demand for, for that house or factory here. We have only installed one turbine, and we have started out with a large one, six megawatt turbine. That might be a bit uh, big for, for a household, but it could be a factory, uh, and then it makes sense. So we set up a, a standard park calculation in, uh, in WinPro. We calculate the hourly production for a period. And uh, that is basis for our hybrid calculation. If we remember the slide with the, with the setup of the hybrid tool, we can, we can remember that together with the production from the unit, we will also need information about uh, electricity prices. That is, of course, a very important step. And we will also need information about the demand we have on our factory, uh, the self-consumption within the, the factory. And to, to load this, um, we have decided to, to reuse our old metro object, which is more like a data container now. For those of you who, who have worked with WinPro uh, before, you know that the metro object is, is located here. But now we should see it as a data container that can contain information about time series. Because time series is the the, co the cornerstone of this hybrid tool. Uh, the days are gone where we talked about 12,000 megawatt hours per year at a certain price. That's not the world anymore. We need to know the price and production capacity in each and every hour. So we, in, uh, we uh, include a major object. And what would we start with first? Yeah, we will start to add the time series for our electricity demand because we know for sure that that will go into our analysis. So I select go time series and I have prepared a file with uh, demand and uh, I can select it here. It, you, it's done exactly as you normally add uh, wind data to a meter object exactly the same procedure and more or less exactly the same procedure as for any other tools that can load a text file or CSV file with a lot of data. So now we can view the file and see there's some information in here. There's something about date, time and demand. It looks a bit suspicious. Um, I press the auto detect button and uh, then I can press view file again. And now it looks much nicer. We have a time series here actually with a half hour demands and here the demand in megawatt. So I set up my uh, my import here. Uh, WinPro has already recognized the date and time. So that one is done. And then I have here, this is power. But yeah, actually it's not power exactly what we're looking for here because power is on the production side. Demand is uh, on the, of course, demand side. So what we are trying to add here is the demand time series. We can see it's measured in megawatt that's listed here. So I changed to, to megawatt. And the, the the only, you can say a, a stupid thing is we need to specify a height for it because that's where this uh, data container is born that is in the, in the wind business and therefore we need a height for it. So you can put in whatever you want. It's not used at all in the calculations. So now we have set up the import and we can jump to the data setup. And I want to add a height and that was my one meter height. And uh, now, it, 
again, you can see we are we are we are born this in the wind business. So now we, instead of mean wind speed, we see if we can find something called demand. And you can see once I select demand here, it grabs that time series which is which is already called something about demand. So now I can uh, clear and load all exactly the same procedure as if you used uh, wind data. And now you can see one of the, the strong tools here is the graphic representation of the data where you can uh, you can scroll through your demand time series. Here's a simple time series and this is the demand now converted into kilowatts. And you can see how it varies. And a very important one is this diurnal one where you can see the diurnal variation of our demand. It's uh, obvious that we have a demand starting here in the morning. Of course, there's also a demand in the night. It's very low. Then we have a demand starting here in the morning, peaking around noon, and then uh, ending down at the low level around midnight again. It could be a good uh, option to investigate a PV plant here because we have actually this day night variation, but we have decided to show the example with a wind turbine. And uh, here you can see the demand. And uh, the reason why selecting a wind turbine is actually this one, because we have a very low demand uh, in the summer period where we have a high production from our PV plant. And in winter time, in the winter months, we have a high demand that fits very nicely with the turbine production. And finally, before we, we proceed, we give it a name, demand time series. And we press OK to this one. And the uh, next thing is to add a electricity price. I will do that a bit faster, uh, but you can just follow here. And as Per mentioned, we will record and you can watch it over and over again. We go time series, we add a file, and now I select the one called power prices. I select auto detect, and now you can see it hasn't really recognized what we are talking about. I can press the view file button and see, okay, I have time series here. I have something with the date, I have something with the time, and then I have a value. Okay, so I specify my columns. Uh, this is timestamp, timestamp, and this is uh, electricity price, it's here. And uh, this one is uh, the date, this one is the time. And you can see down here, it has recognized that this is uh, electricity price and it is in euro per megawatt hour. It also recognized the, the time format. It didn't recognize the date format, so I'll just add that in. And now you can see there's a converted date here. Again, I need to add a, a height. Jump to the data setup. Now I can try with auto create. It didn't auto create anything, so I simply add my electricity price signal here. It picks automatically. I put in my height and then I clear and load all. Again, if we go to graphics, we can see the variation in electricity prices. It's going up and down. I can show uh, all data and uh, here it's obvious that we have a rather constant level and then suddenly something happens. Here we are showing data from 19, 20 and 21 and um, yeah it's obvious that the prices they have gone up in 21 and it's even worse or even better depending on who you are in 22. Again, we can we can see some variation in the diurnal pattern and the monthly pattern. Again, we have this really nice tool to investigate our time series. Finally, we uh, we give it a name. Electricity 
Rise. So now if I jump to my object list, you can see I have a wind turbine. I have an object with the, the time series for my uh, demand, and then I have a time series with my electricity price. And again, if you had your production data from some other source, then just uh, make it into a reasonable CSV or text file, and you can load it straight in here and use it in your calculations. That was the basic setup uh, for, for starting a hybrid calculation. Now we actually have all the parts we need. We have production, we have demand, and we have uh, uh, prices. So I can start the hybrid tool now by clicking the green arrow. And we start out with this. Um, it can be a bit overwhelming to see uh, an almost blank sheet of paper or screen. Um, but I will, I will um, tell you how you should interpret and what is it you're seeing here. We have split the screen into two. Here in the upper part, we have all the results and all the outputs. And you can see there's a green button called simulate. Green, that normally means you have to press it, but so far we haven't added any information, so don't press it right now. And here in the lower part of the screen, we have all our input data. You can see here we have several tabs we can go through. Per default, it starts up in this time series because time series is the important part here. We need to add some data to the calculation before we can run it. If you look down here, you can see what we can uh, add. You can see here add park calculation, and then we have this uh, icon for park. Below we have a major object or data container, which is called wind production. So this is the difference here. If you have run a park calculation, you can simply click this button. If you have your energy production from your wind turbines from another source, add it to a data container or major object, and then load it in here. You can see it's the same for all uh, the other ones, PV uh, directly from a calculation or PV from an object. And we can add black and green production, which has to come from the data container. Then we have electricity prices and demand. We also have fixed energy prices, but to be honest, I don't think fixed energy prices is that important when we talk about a hybrid. But it could be, it could be. So what is it we want? Yeah, we want to add our wind farm or our wind turbine. So now we select this one, add park calculation, and then WinPro pops up with all the park calculations available. And it's very easy for me. I have only one, so I select that one. And now you can see something happened. We got a line here. This one is red. Don't bother about that. That's not a problem uh, right now. And you can also see we got some information here in the upper part too. So that means now we have loaded data to the system. And what we have loaded is an annual energy production from this turbine of 22,535.1 megawatt hours. So now we have some input. We can see we have data from January 18 to September 22. We have the rated capacity. We have added some kind of reduction of the power output. That could be losses, whatever. 10% is a very high value here. Normally I will expect one to 2% for some electricity losses. Um, then we also have this one development. And uh, that is actually true to include an index on the value. It could be uh, some kind of degradation of the turbine. It could also be a PV plant where we want to, to add some kind of degradation of the asset. And that can be done here. You can edit the indexes uh, and then add whatever you want. And then that will be taken into account over the calculation period. 
So uh, what else do we have here? Yeah, we have uh, also uh, the electricity prices. So I select this one. Now I have two, then it's a bit more complicated because I had a, I had an old one. So this is the new one I made. Press OK. And now you can see uh, this one turns red. And you can see this is a, the electricity price and it's not covering exactly the same period. It's from 19 to 21. So it's three years, 19, 20 and 21. And finally, I will also add my demand. Uh, this one and press OK. And now you can see we get rid of this uh, red cell and we have a nice data set here with production, demand and electricity prices um, covering a three year period. So what is done <coughs> when I calculate yeah, WinPro calculates only one year, and then that year is uh, repeated a number of times, and it's repeated exactly the number of operation years put in here. The basic idea behind this tool is to calculate the lifetime cost of all parameters. So therefore, the, the operational period is, is important. So now I have three years. So that means I can actually investigate three different scenarios and that is done in here. If I change this to 2020, then 2020 will be investigated uh, for a 20 year period. And if I put in 22, then of course 22 will be repeated 20 times and we will uh, do our investigation based on that. So that is an easy way to make more scenarios, simply adding more years in the analysis and change the year here. Important is to have uh, concurrency, the wind farm production and the price signal, they must be for the same period, especially in areas where you have a, a high degree of, uh, of wind turbines, or it could also be PVs. They will have the production from the wind terms, turbines will have an impact on the electricity prices. So if we start mixing years, then we are comparing very different uh, situations. So it's important that concurrency between production and electricity prices. Can we run the simulation now? Yeah, we could do that, but now we have only added you can say the operation of the asset we haven't told the tool how much does it actually cost to buy these assets because that's the the whole idea of this investment analysis we want to see what is the capex what is the opex how much can we earn on the on the system and then do an evaluation of that so we jump to the cost tab and here you can see there's a red field. That means we need to do something here. In uh, WinPro, we have this cost model. <coughs> it's used in several places, for example, here in hybrid, but it's also in the, in the, in the heart of the optimization tool where we can optimize uh, the wind turbine positions uh, based on uh, economy that could be levelized cost of energy or it could be net present value. Therefore, we have this really nice cost model. You might have your own more advanced cost models. You might even have offers from turbine manufacturers and so on. But um, <clears throat> if you don't have anything, you can simply build your own cost model here. We have uh, added some values giving us your development cost of the project, the capex based on number of turbines, number of foundations, meters of road and so on. Then we also have capex values based on the installed capacity in total. And then we have opex values split both on installed capacity on and on energy production. And finally, in the last year, we might have to spend some money on making everything nice again when we leave the site. 
you can modify this. You can put in your own numbers, but I would say it's a, it's a really good starting point if you don't have any uh, specific values for wind power projects. Over here, you can see uh, an overview for, for the site. And uh, down here, we can already see an idea of what is the levelized cost of energy based on these uh, numbers here. So it's easy to, to make a very fast uh, investigation of a specific uh, turbine setup. This LCOE calculation is also included in the, in the standard park calculation where you can add it and, and show the results. So you can together with your wind farm estimate also get an LCOE out. So that's really nice if you want to investigate what turbines should I pick here? Should I large roads or small roads or high hop height, low hop height, whatever. But here we only use it for, for adding information about the cost. So now I press OK. So this one. And um, actually now we have everything we need. So we should be able to press the simulate button. And now WinPro is uh, running through all the all the numbers. And we can now we want to interpret this one. So what is it actually we are trying to investigate here in this behind meter setup? Here we have a demand. Our demand is 28,000 megawatt hours per year. Our turbine produce 20, almost 24,000 megawatt hours per year. That means we need to import something. So what is it we are investigating? Yeah, we are investigating a situation or comparing a situation where we we import everything. We have a demand. How can we cover that? We can do that by importing electricity. In this case, it gives me a lifetime cost for the project of 23 million euros. If I install a wind turbine, and if I have the electricity prices from 19, then I would have a lifetime cost of 22 million. Supplying my demand with electricity from my wind turbine and some import still, because we have to import something. And of course, all the costs for building the turbines is also included. So after 20 years, if I don't do anything and I import everything I need, I will spend 23 million euros. If I install the wind turbine, my total cost of those 20 years will be 22 million. That means I have earned around 1 million uh, euros. Now we can now we can try with another year. For example, 20. And we can simulate. And now we are running with a different price scenario. And oops, suddenly my full import or all import scenario is much, much cheaper. And I don't earn that much on building my own wind farm. So actually now it's not a good idea to build the wind farm. And then I can try with 21. And uh, I think as a no surprise, it's a really good business case. So now I'm really earning a lot of money. So this is to show you uh, this a sensitivity study we can do uh, using different years. So instead of just adding one year into the system, add more years and see, uh, get different results out of the system. But in this case, we are actually not just interested in this setup because now we haven't talked about taxes and tariffs we need to refine it a bit because the whole idea of producing our own electricity 
is to get rid of taxes and tariffs when we import from the grid. In this calculation here so far, we are paid exactly the same amount of euros for each megawatt hour we export, and we pay exactly the same when we get it back, of course, depending on the spot market price in that hour. But we can also add tariffs. We jump to this import cost where we can add a tariff. <coughs> so that means every time we import electricity to our microgrid, we add a tariff that could be 30 euros per megawatt hour. Now you can see we have a saving here of 15 million. Let's try to simulate. And see what happens. Uh, it got slightly bigger. Now we can again try our 2020 where we had some problems uh, getting a positive value. Now we simulate. So now we actually earn money because we now have a tax on our imported electricity. So that is uh, that is in rough terms what is going on here. You can try different years. You can do an estimation of a specific scenario, but that is perhaps not all we want. We want to investigate a, to, a bit to see. Yeah, I picked this uh, six megawatt turbine. Was it the right size for me? Should I have picked something else? So now I can go into the optimize tool. And that is uh, simply uh, a calculation of the lifetime economy where we try to change the size of the wind farm. In this case, we start out with a factor one, this is the scaling factor. That means the wind farm is exactly the same as when I started the calculation. If I run the optimization, WinPro will try different values here and see if I can improve my business case with a different size of turbine. So let me let me try running the optimization here. And now you can see it has started. I'm moved away here. And you can see the factor here is changing. And the total cost you can follow here in each step. At some point, we will reach a constant level. That means we have found the right size of the wind turbine. If you look here, it's a factor of 0.697. I'll just stop it here. So that means instead of a 6.2 megawatt turbine, the right size of turbine for this specific place is 4.3 megawatt instead. So perhaps I shouldn't go for this uh, big turbine. Remember, this also depends on what year you're in. If we have used year 21 with very high electricity prices, then I think we should build as big as possible. So now you can see that scaling factor is transferred to here. So instead of a production of 23,000 megawatt hours, then based on this scaling, we only get this. But we improved our business case over here. So that's that's how you can uh, you can investigate it and see how to to change the numbers to get a stable business case, uh, try different years, try different setups, see what happens. Next step is the battery. Because for these behind the meter solutions, I would say a battery can quite often be a, be a good choice. So how do we do that? Yeah, we simply go into this tab called storage. And uh, there's an add button down here. And now we have to decide what size of battery we want. Default here is a five megawatt hour battery. That means it can take around uh, one hour of production from my wind turbine. 
perhaps we will want a bit more. Um, let's say we want around five, six hours. And we want a bit more here, so we want to be able to charge with uh, two and a half megawatt. Just to, to show you how to do it, of course, you can put in your own values, and there will also be a, a loss related to both charge and discharge. So now I can simulate again. Remember here, I'm simulating without any cost model, so I actually get the battery for free. Remember that. So now suddenly my business case jumped from 2.4 million, 2.3 million to almost 5 million in savings. So there's a huge value in the battery and of course there is because we can even out the the peaks we can save some energy from uh, expensive hours to to cheap hours but that's not the whole story we need to go in and define a cost for the battery and i have a battery cost here so now i've selected the battery cost every time i select something here it empties the window i have to press simulate again And oops, the the battery is quite expensive here. So it's not worth installing if we look at 20 prices. So let's try 2021 prices and simulate. And now you can see there's, uh, I'm saving something, but I don't know whether it's the battery or the system itself, the, the, the battery might make it uh, into a poorer business case. So again, I can run the optimization exactly as I did with the wind turbine. But instead of optimizing the wind turbine, I will try to first uh, optimize the volume, the storage volume. So now I run the optimize on the battery storage. <laughs> and now you can see again here the the scaling factor is dropping i'm uh, improving my business case because my cost is dropping and oops what happened now the scaling factor is zero uh, stop it so that means when i run the optimization i shouldn't have a battery here because the optimal solution is a scaling factor of zero. That means no battery at all. And you can see here, when we press OK to this, removing the battery improved significantly on this part. One last thing to mention about the, the battery is this button, Opti Storage. I won't show you. Uh, what is done because it's only pressing the button waiting five ten minutes and then get a result back but what it does is it uses the more advanced optimization methods we have implemented in energy pro it's the milp solver mixed integer linear programming and that can utilize the battery even better than our in this case more simple hour by hour approach with the MILP solver, you can actually see, okay, in five hours, I have very high prices. Let me save my battery until there and then sell some electricity. And so that's a bit more advanced. It will give you a little bit extra value of the battery, but my advice is to, to run the optimization, find the right size of the battery, with the, with the standard setup, and then you can run the Opti storage afterwards to see, can I squeeze a little bit more money out of this, this system? Yes. That was uh, the behind meter calculation. <coughs> As you can see, it's a tool where you work and you get some numbers out. 
There are, of course, some export functions. I will show you that in the in the next uh, use case because we also need some time for the next use case, and that's the one I have here. That is a more general hybrid setup where we instead of just uh, covering our own demand, we are actually selling all our electricity to the grid. I have made an artificial project here with a 100 megawatt wind farm and a 113 megawatt PV plant. And I have a grid connection of 75 megawatt. So now I want to investigate, is it stupid to install both 100 megawatt of wind and 113 megawatt peak of PV? I have done exactly the same as uh, before. Of course, I haven't added it any demand because I don't have a demand. I'm exporting everything. I have run the park calculation and the solar PV calculation, and now I can start the hybrid tool. I can add my park calculation. Again, easy choice. I can add my PV calculation. And I can add my electricity prices. That was all the input around time series. Now I want to have a look at the costs and you can see here no costs. Again, I can edit the cost functions. Go through all the numbers, see if uh, I agree. I press OK. Now the hybrid tool has a, a cost model in. Exactly the same can be done for, uh, for the PV plant. We have this one down here where we calculate capex. Everything is scaled to installed capacity. And I press OK to this one. And I can now simulate. So what is it I'm simulating now? Yeah, now I don't have any kind of demand on my site. I'm selling every megawatt hour produced will be sold to the grid unless the electricity price is below zero, then I will curtail the turbines. We can, for example, see here uh, in the result graphs <coughs> that based on the export, three quarters of the uh, export is from wind and only a little bit from solar. And then we have the exported, that is uh, the, the production here, is 97% is exported. And then we have this price limit curtailment covering 3%. That means we have prices below zero. So therefore, we stop the turbines and the PVs. But we haven't included any kind of grid limitation now. Now we have the, the full capacity to export. And be aware, this is a positive number. Uh, that is not good. Um, we should have negative values um, the way it's it's set up. For example, if we pick, pick 21 and run the simulation, you can see with much higher electricity prices, we earn a lot of money. So that's that's how it's set up. It's just to remember then when, when we are running in this utility or grid mode, then the the, the the income is in negative numbers. So we want to see what is the what is the effect of adding a grid limit. So now we have around 230 million in lifetime income for this project. So I can go to this external grid and see here grid capacities change this one to 75 megawatt, for example. And now I can simulate again. And now I only earn 188,000 million or only. It's still a, a sum of money, but compared to the 230 million before, then, um, <coughs> then it's a drop. And of course, we still earn money. We have a nice positive net present value. 
we have an internal rate of return calculated. We also have the LCOE calculated. Of course, everything uh, works in 21. We could also look at it in 19, just to get an idea. And now you can see we suddenly have a negative net present value. The internal rate is not calculated and so on. Uh, the LCOE is uh, simply too high compared to the electricity prices. Again, you can try different things. You can see if you can make your turbines or PV plant uh, a bit cheaper. Uh, you can see if you can add some grants and so on. Again, we can optimize the size of the of the wind turbine and the PV plant. It's exactly the same procedure as I showed you for, for the more simple example. Let's um, only have a look at this one. And now you can see here that suddenly, instead of exporting a lot and only have a small price curtailment, now we actually have this grid limit curtailment. So that shows how much energy that is lost in that way. Yes. Of course, we can also add a battery here. Let's uh, let's try it and see, uh, add a battery. And uh, let's make it a, a big one. And again, we haven't added any cost. But now you can see uh, the total here and the, the battery size. Exactly the same picture as before. The values we have for batteries is there. There's too expensive. But of course, if you can get a, a cheap battery, then it's uh, then it's excellent. One last thing before I wrap up is um, this uh, result to file button. And I think that's important because if you have more complex situations, you have made, for example, some analysis here and you have an idea, OK, this is how it should look. I want to investigate a bit more in depth in, for example, Energy Pro, where you have the full flexibility to, to set up whatever you want. Then you can select this one and uh, export uh, these uh, files here and load it in as time series in Energy Pro. And you can use your basic input from this to continue with power to X calculations or sector coupling or whatever you want. So let me just jump back to, um, to this slide. I think we can manage to have it in non-presenting mode. Uh, it's, it's all I will show you is this one. We are working on some further development of the tool. We would like to have this scenario optimizer and in, instead of just getting one value out of the, the tool saying this is the best, we want to investigate if I have different sizes of, for example, my PV plant and different sizes of my wind farm, where can I find my sweet spot in terms of net present value or internal rate of return, uh, whatever you want to, to, to talk about? Yeah, then I can see it's here. It's a nice graphical representation of it. We also want to improve something about the grid limitations so we can have time varying results there or time varying inputs and also on the grid tariffs, especially for this behind meter setup. It, uh, it's a demand to have time varying tariffs. So you, yeah, you pay extra tax in the more expensive hours. Yes, that was uh, that was all for me. Hopefully, uh, Pierre has received some questions during the presentation. Here you go. Can you please repeat or re elaborate one on the time series start and operation start, and two on the hard coded elements? Yes. Let's start with this one. Time series starts. This one des decides what 
price signal and what production you want to use for your 20 years. So if I select 19 here, it will take one year starting from January 19. That's the basis for my calculation there. The other one, operation starts, that's related to, for example, here in time series, the development. If, if I have a, an index giving me some development, then it's of course important to know where to start and then develop from there. It can also be a bit of timing uh, when something happens. Uh, it could also be reinvestment in uh, inverters and so on. That can also be done. So that's the that's the the basic difference. This is you can say the year you imagine you invest, and that is used for for these development uh, indices. And this is to pick what year you want to investigate. And then about the hard coded part, um, let me jump back to this one. You can. I don't know whether it's this one or this one we talk about. If, if we take this one, for example, how we want to use it. I, I think it makes sense in most cases that we first want to use it directly. If we have a demand, we can charge, we can export, and then we can finally contain. Um, so that one, I think, will, will be correct in, in most cases. We have we have mitigated a little bit here in the optic storage solution so we can benefit a bit more on the battery. So here we are actually challenging this priority. Uh, the first one up here, this prioritization, uh, you can say that is, um, it's not the most optimal solution. I think many users would like to have the opportunity to at least swap EV and wind. Sometimes we see an existing wind farm with a grid uh, connection, and then someone wants to build a PV plant below the turbines, it might not be the same owner. So that means the PV, they have to only use the gaps or, or non-used uh, grid from the turbines. So the turbines will have priority. Uh, I have a hope that we will make an option so you can, you can swap this um, when you do the calculations, because I think that's that's rather important that you have the opportunity to do that. And finally, if you if you want to do it really uh, advanced, you can jump to the Energy Pro tool where we you have full flexibility to 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 run the units as you want them. Yeah, I think <clears throat> time is is. Uh... Almost up. There's a last question whether the location of the factory, the geographical location of the factory, is important for the calculations. And it's not. No, it's not. Yeah. Good. Uh, thank you very much, Mass. If you have any uh, questions, uh, please contact us. Uh, you can write to support at EMDDK, or if you want to order a hybrid, you can uh, write to sales at EMDDK. And you can visit our YouTube channel. Uh, and you can always read uh, the manual and quick guides on our knowledge base by visiting helpemd.dk. And uh, with that, thank you very much and have a very nice day.